welcome back to another video on the She Knows Him channel. I have the honor and the privilege of having three of my very best friends filming this video with me. We have Destiny, Sarah, and Emma. I'm so excited to have them. And so we actually all met at Oral Roberts University. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shout out. Shout out to all of you. So we all met at Oral Roberts University. Me and Destiny have a funny story because we, our parents actually met in college. So me and Destiny kind of just grew up like, yeah on like they would come for road trips and stuff and just like kind of come because they lived in houston and we lived in dallas so they just did we kind of did long distance friendship yeah. for a long time but then when we met in college again like we destiny's a year ahead of me and so then i went to college that year after her and we i feel like our friendship just built so much after that yeah it went from truly like it wasn't just a long distance friendship anymore like our friendship really just blossomed in that time yeah. Um, and she is seriously a party. Like, if you know Tessie at all, she's so much fun. Like, I had the most fun my freshman year with her because she, every weekend we were going to concerts and like, she, she, <laughs> she literally, literally, literally every weekend, like, she knew all the, like, all the parties, she knew all the concerts. She is so much fun. So, um, and not only that, it was such a blessing to have her at that time because it was not for me coming in as a freshman because you, everything's so new when you go to college. And um, so I had a lot of fear going to college and I was also really excited, but to have like not only a best friend, but like someone who actually felt like family to me, yeah. being there was so special. I truly felt like I had a sister on campus with me. So that was really, really amazing. And then we <laughs> met Sarah. <laughs> and so me and Destiny went to a church night, like a youth. It's youth like a young adult. Young. I really cared about having um, good friendships in college and so that was something I was really praying about and I remember um, we walked into this like young adults <laughs> event <laughs> and I'll never forget I walked into that room and it was the weirdest thing I can't even really explain it but it was like truly it was like the only person I saw in there was Sarah like it was so weird like God, yeah. God truly like he truly actually illuminated her to me and I remember seeing her and thinking, oh my gosh, like there was just something about her. Like there was something on her that was so <laughs> special. And later that night, I don't even remember how it happened, like how we started talking, but I think eventually me and S me and Destiny made our way over and people were coming up and talking to us and Sarah's very extroverted. So she probably even came yeah, up to us. Yeah, you're new. <laughs> yeah, she may have even come up to us or something. And I just remember talking to her like when she was with us and I was like, there was something about her. I knew for sure she was gonna be in my life. Um, mm -hmm. and forever for like a long time like she I knew in my mind I was like this is someone I want to be in my life and to be a good friend for me um, and then through Sarah I met Emma and <laughs> I love Emma so much I feel like me and Emma relate on so many different levels like we both have very entrepreneurial mm -hmm. spirits <laughs> and we just we just meet on a lot of different levels and um, maybe even Emma doesn't know this about herself but I had the honor and the privilege of getting to kind of see her walk through like going from single to dating and then to being married. Yeah. And she just did it with so much, so much grace and so much maturity. And she just carries that so much on herself. Like when I think of her, I think of grace and maturity. <laughs> and so in a lot of ways, I actually, I really look up to Emma. So basically I have the most amazing friends ever. <laughs> and so <laughs> always the best. Yes. So, I love them so much. And each relationship is like, they're each so unique and so yeah. special. And. I just love them a lot, so and I'm thankful that they're doing this video with me. I thought who like who better to do this friendship video with me than three of my best friends. So <laughs> it's perfect. So the first question, we're basically gonna just kind of dive into like the value <laughs> of, of friendship. And um, basically we're just gonna like do a discussion as if we were just sitting in our living room, but we just want you guys we to are be sitting in my living room. By and we are sitting in <laughs> so. we are in Sarah's <laughs> living room, yes. So first question. <laughs> Why is it important to choose good and healthy friends in college? <laughs> well, for one, I think it's really hard to do it alone. Like, mm -hmm. especially the whole world of college and just mm -hmm. all the things that come with that. It's so much better with friends mm -hmm. and they like will pull you out of stuff that you go through and just mm -hmm. be there for you. Mm -hmm. Um, that was really the case you mentioned. You came, I'm a year ahead of you, so you came in my sophomore year, and mm -hmm. I had just come out of something really hard. Mm -hmm. And that was a time that you were able to really build with me, invest in me, and um, enjoy time together. Mm -hmm. So that's one example of how um, we need friends, and you can't just do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of um, people, if they go, like we were all really blessed and got to go to ORU, and mm -hmm. um, I feel like that's where I really like blossomed as a believer. 
and everything in call or in high school, I did not feel like I was as strong as I was in college. And so, um, if you're in a secular university, then I think it's really important to have those mm -hmm. people yeah. um, in your life because you're really going to transform a lot in college, whether you think you are or not. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's important to really have those people to walk with you through difficult yeah. times and the good times. It's just yeah. crucial. Yeah. And what's nice about college is you're all kind of going through the same season of life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so um, college is really just a great time to find your people, your best friends. <laughs> to make use of the time because mm -hmm. you don't really get another chance in your life where you're living on the same campus That's or in town. Yeah. You can literally, you're saying, go to mm -hmm. coffee and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, you're just literally around them all the time and you can just go study at a coffee shop or mm -hmm. go get lunch together or whatever. And it's just the perfect time to figure out what kind of friends you want to have, what kind of friends you want to be, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. find your people. Really build them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said about college. No matter where you go, like if you're going to a Christian university or a secular university, we call it secular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, normal, normal, just normal, just normal, normal, normal. Yeah, yeah. Like the public versus private, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but college is truly, I think, some of the most important times in our life. Mm -hmm. um, it's really a time where you, no matter where you're at, no matter what college you go to, that's going to be a time in your life where you're really shaped and molded. Mm -hmm. Um, you are going to go through things, whether you think you won't or not. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be some of the best times in your life, but it definitely will be the turning point in your life where you kind of decide, you know, this is the person I want to be because yeah. you're kind of off on your own. Mm -hmm. You get to go live and explore and kind of just become and blossom into who you want to become. And so it's so vital. It's so important that you have good people around you who like push you to make good decisions, to do things um, from a good foundation and kind of just build you up in a, to go on a good path, you know, friends that support you to go in the good direction. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I feel like that adds so much value to our lives and our future. Mm -hmm. What kind of friends should we look for? Like what are good characteristics mm -hmm. that we should look for in friends? Because I feel like that's something that a lot of people have trouble like really yeah. having. Yeah. What you were talking about earlier, just how we want to be our true self mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. bring out qualities in each other that are valuable and not butting heads all the time or challenging mm -hmm. each other or co competing, I guess is a mm -hmm. better word. Um, yeah, but just sure. really feeling free to um, build each other up and embrace the good things about you. Honestly, I want to hang out with people that are funny and I found yeah. that these for sure. So like that's a superficial thing, but that's important. Yeah, yeah. But like, sure. yeah, yeah. yeah. you guys can't laugh together. Need life. Yes. No, good luck. Like, yes. <laughs> no, true. Um, yeah. But on like yeah. a more serious note, like I think having the same core beliefs is like probably the most important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and it's not like you guys have to agree on every single spiritual matter, mm -hmm. but like if you all love Jesus, like that is a great starting mm -hmm. point. Yeah. And you can really yeah. challenge each other and stuff like that if you don't yeah. believe all the exact same right. things mm -hmm. um, but that's really important because you, you're going through something you don't want someone that's going to have a negative influence in your life and mm -hmm. um, isn't a believer they're not going to say hey I'm praying for you in this or like I felt like God put this on my heart for you they're mm -hmm. not going to be able to give you that insight and I think that's mm -hmm. something that I found really really important with yeah. these girls mm -hmm. yeah and on that note of like challenging each other finding someone who can hold you accountable too yeah, is true. really important because um, no, that's good. If you find someone who's just gonna say you're doing great all the time, mm -hmm. you may be doing great, but you want someone who is going to, um, as long as they share the same beliefs as you, hold up those values and yeah. keep you accountable. If you're doing something that maybe you shouldn't be doing, you want someone who's gonna be honest with you mm -hmm. that you can trust to give you good advice. Yeah. So what kind of things should we avoid in friendships? Mm -hmm. I'm like for, yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. ugh, who's gonna start? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> We're gonna start criticizing people now. Um, a big thing for me that like really gets on my nerves, but I just feel like it's not signs of maturity. It's just impatience. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you, we kind of talked about this before we started the video, but if you can't spend all your time with them, they're not gonna be offended. Or like if you're mm -hmm. dating someone, you want to hang out with your boyfriend, or you have a family event, like they're not gonna say, oh how dare you? Like we're supposed to hang out on these nights mm -hmm. or whatever. They're gonna be understanding and they're yeah. gonna be patient with you. And mm -hmm. um, I think that also transcends into kind of what Olivia was saying about holding you accountable and what you're saying about mm -hmm. holding people accountable and checking in on you and like, hey, how are you doing in this? Mm -hmm. Like, they're not going to get mad at you if you're like kind of stagnant. They're going to try to help you. They're yeah. not going to um, grow impatient with you. And we talked earlier about being able to trust the people that you're close to. Mm -hmm. If you notice that someone is really gossipy or is constantly talking negative about other people, yes. it's likely they're probably going to do the same thing to you. That's so and good. if yeah, you can't trust them to keep your secrets and mm -hmm. uh, talk 
well about you around other people, then you're not going to be able to trust them to be a good friend. So, but I think another huge one of things to avoid is I think when we come to college, if you enter college without having a boyfriend, um, and you're kind of going into college, like thinking you're going to meet all these people, you know, you might end up getting a boyfriend right away, which I'm not saying is wrong. Um, a lot of people do that, but I think a huge thing to keep in mind when that does happen is a lot of the time you haven't had a chance to really build your own, um, I guess, I don't want to use really the word identity, but you haven't really been able to cultivate your own like person. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just it. Like it's truth though. Uh -huh. yeah. Like it's hard. You almost need some time to kind of build your own person and mm -hmm. develop friendships. And sometimes when you jump into a relationship, right, when you got, walk into college, mm -hmm. you end up becoming friends with the people he's already made friends with. Right. And so not only are you um, in relationship with this person, but then you're also in relationship with his friends. And then say, worst thing happens, you guys were to end up breaking up. Now, not only do you like, not only do you not have this person in your life anymore that you were dating, but now you also lost a lot of these friends that you sure. had. And so then you're kind of stuck in this position of like, you're isolated, you're lonely, you have nowhere to turn, you have no one to talk to because they're all his friends or her mm -hmm. friends. And that's just a really, I feel like a really hard spot to be in. And um, so I think the best thing to do is just be mindful. Like if you were to jump into a relationship pretty quickly, like make sure you're also trying to cultivate your own yeah. friendships outside of yeah. that. And you're not just only sticking with him, especially just one-on-one -on -one all the time. Yeah. Like don't make sure your boyfriend's not your best friend. I know that's like such a goal thing these days, <laughs> which is not wrong, but like, don't make that literal. Like don't be with yeah. him 24 seven. I feel like that's so unhealthy. Um, and yeah, just being mindful of like making sure you're building other relationships around your relationship as well. Yep. Yeah, for me, like coming to college, I think college is very exciting for many reasons. Mm -hmm. Like you just come out of high school, maybe you're moving away from your hometown, from your parents, and you have your own quote unquote life now. And yeah. so you want to, and if you already have a boyfriend or you jump into one, you like the excitement for me was like, oh, I get to be my boyfriend. We can do whatever mm -hmm. we want, whenever we want. We don't have guidelines. Mm -hmm. And that's like a really dangerous place to be for the reason she was saying that you just isolate yourself with him mm -hmm. and you're distracted from school. You're distracted from people right in front of you that can mm -hmm. be quality friends. Mm -hmm. But I think that's what college should be. Like she talked about mm -hmm. like starting over and everything. Yeah. And like really, that was what I was really excited about about mm -hmm. college because I went uh, from like eighth grade through uh, high school, I was with the same people, and yeah. I went to a really small private school, so it was like everyone knew everyone's business, like yeah. mm -hmm. whether you mm -hmm. wanted to or not. Like that's that scary. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. <laughs> but going to ORU was like really exciting because I was like, I get to like reestablish who mm -hmm. I am. Like there, there's a couple people I graduated high school with that I went um, to ORU with, but we're just so like. We had different classes, different majors, so we mm -hmm. didn't like run into each other a lot. But it was like I really got to establish who I was, and like yeah. if I had decided I wanted to be goth, like I could have gone. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I said <laughs> not. Um, but it's just like, and I think yeah, whoever you surround oh, yourself with, especially kind of like right out of the gate, like yeah. right first starting college, you mm -hmm. really, um, I know that really kind of is poured into those people poured into me a lot about like who I am today and like I yes. honestly wouldn't be the woman I am without these girls but I'm mm -hmm. um, also be encouraged like Olivia met all of us her freshman year but like mm -hmm. I didn't meet them until my sophomore year and yeah. I was yeah same, same. so mm -hmm. it's if you're not making friends like right off the bat like mm -hmm. don't be discouraged in that yeah, or if you are so making good. friends but they're not like the core friends you really want or that you're hearing us describe like don't be discouraged because you know they're probably just they're still out there <laughs> yes. but yeah to go off of that um my freshman year i of course wanted to read it myself but i carried over my like just super shy tendencies from high school and i made sort of friends um my freshman year but they weren't like my core friends i guess they were people that i would hang out with occasionally but we weren't super super close and so i think it's easy to get discouraged um that first year especially i mean it's ever different for everybody mm -hmm. but for me i got really discouraged and i was like i don't have any friends i'm not close to anybody mm -hmm. um and that was kind of hard on me but um like just the beginning of sophomore year, I met Sarah, and I actually met my husband too the same day. Um, <laughs> Girl, <laughs> <good day. laughs> but all that to say, don't get discouraged if you don't find your best friends right off the bat. Like there's yes. there, yeah. there's still plenty of opportunities to make more. So uh -huh. yeah. um, no, that's so yeah. good. I'm so glad you guys brought up that yeah. um, that topic because that's so true. You feel like after your first year, you kind of feel like maybe you missed it or yeah. it feels like everyone's kind of made their groups already. You yeah. see everybody hanging out and you're like, oh my gosh, like I totally missed all my people and like, I don't know what group I fit in anymore. And that's so good. It's not too late. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that kind of leads into our next question of like, 
how do we find these type of good friendships? Like, mm -hmm. where can we find them? And like, how do we find them? Because yeah. like, we know what to identify now, but it's like, where do we look for them? I guess yeah. to say. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but so I guess I'll kind of talk about how Emma and I met a little bit. I guess was like was through a mutual friend. But because I was like hanging out with her and took up, uh, like accepted her invitations to go hang out and stuff is like how I met Emma. So it was like through a mutual friend mm -hmm. and she's like a really good godly girl. So it wasn't like some rando or sketchy person. Yeah. It wasn't like that. It was, I was surrounding myself with good godly people. Mm -hmm. And um, even though we didn't click on the same level that I have with these girls, I uh, was still able to meet them. So no, that's really good. I think when you find someone who like meets qualities and things that you are looking for in a friend, you can be, be very hopeful that they probably know other people that are yes, just like exactly them right. for the most part. And so yeah. just like Sarah was saying, when you meet one person, it's like you've, you're going to probably be meeting a lot of others too. Yeah, so that's sure. really good. For sure. And like look at extracurricular stuff too. Like yeah. there's probably clubs all over your campus. So yeah. um, find sure. a club or a committee or I don't know what other colleges have, but find something that interests you and you're likely to find people who yeah. have the same common interests as interests. you because common interests spark friendships. Yes. So that's a recommendation that I would mm -hmm. have. Just and I think everything that they've said is kind of comes down to being truly intentional. I know that word's used all the time, Yeah. yeah. but <laughs> to be like, to be, or to gain friends, you have to be a friend first. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think people are so afraid to kind of like, stick themselves in groups or like to just walk up to someone and like kind of build start building a friendship or be the one to initiate something and that's mm -hmm. i like it's very hard to do mm -hmm. so i'm not like trying to say that it's not because it is hard yeah. but at the same time like if you think about it every single person wants to be loved and every single person wants to feel valued they want to feel like yeah. sought after yeah. and so if you're that person who makes that other person feel that way and i can guarantee you a friendship will start from that um, and if there's someone, like, I feel like I kind of even did that with Sarah. Like, we still don't even really remember how we, like, went out for lunch the first time. Do we even remember who did that? No. It was probably me. I was probably that weirdo who was like, Sarah, you want to grab lunch? <laughs> like, and we really, we really did. We went out for lunch and we kind of just hit it off and we've never been, yeah. like, I feel like mm -hmm. we've been inseparable ever since. Yeah. And sometimes you almost just have to, like, you have to just go for it. You've got to yeah. just reach out to that person. Don't be afraid to text them. Like, don't be afraid mm -hmm. to be like, yeah. hey, you want to go grab coffee or something? Like, they probably are sitting in their dorm room hoping the same thing like everybody's in the yeah. same spot like we're always thinking we're the only ones but it's yeah. so not true like everybody wants a friend mm -hmm. and even people you think have so many friends around them I can guarantee you sometimes it might not be like what it seems yeah um and so just go for it like if there's someone you really want in your life you see something in them mm -hmm. or maybe even got illuminated them to you like my situation with Sarah like don't be afraid to just go for it you know there's a reason why you maybe even came across them to begin with mm -hmm. so I think that's the greatest advice I can give in regards to that is just like go for it like forget about the yeah. fear just be intentional yes. reach out to that person and go to places that you think you can meet those people like they mm -hmm. said go to events go to even meet in class like if you're in your major there's people in your major yeah. that are going to be a lot like you for the most part mm -hmm. maybe not everyone <laughs> yeah but there'll be some people <laughs> she's I'm an engineer, engineer. I, said, I have to touch on that yeah, she's, she's, she's <laughs> but you know for the most part if you see like friends like don't be afraid to just go sit next to them oh, like yeah. people mm -hmm. like that even if they might be like oh this person came to sit next to me today i can be honest with, i can guarantee you they probably enjoyed that you like were intentionally mm -hmm. being sat by oh, them yeah. so yeah, sure. yeah but don't feel like you're limited to your major because i was in yes, a very like yes. male dominated uh, <laughs> classes and i was like Oh, I just want to talk to girls. Like I'm just so, and I think we all actually had different majors, but you like did. we're all like here together. And yeah. um, but like if you are in like that kind of um, degree where like you like it, but you might not like the. Pe I love the people in my classes, yeah. but like I couldn't mm -hmm. talk to them. We couldn't have girl yeah. talk. Not yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, but yeah. like your gen eds, like we sat together mm -hmm. in like Old Testament or Spirit and Power of Living, one of those mm -hmm. classes. But then I remember my. That's how we yeah. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, we make it home. Oh yeah. <laughs> so if you're not seeing people that you're connecting with in your major, just look at your gen ed classes. Like mm -hmm. one of my really good friends um, from ORU, we ORU we met in like a humanities class, and we just sat like I sat like one chair away from her the first day, you know, like given that courtesy <laughs> space. <laughs> but then she like, like we started talking about basketball, and, like we bonded over that, mm -hmm. and so we're still friends to this day. So it doesn't have to be your major. I mean, it could right. be but, right. Like, you can yeah. yeah, just take advantage of mm -hmm. sitting next to someone if they look friendly. Just be like yeah. yeah. <laughs> just go for it. Mm -hmm. Emma is the only one out of us um, four that is married right now. Mm -hmm. So I kind of wanted to talk about like how, like how has building your strong friendships in college kind of affected 
um, your life today after being graduated mm -hmm. and especially after being married mm -hmm. um, and kind of like how what's the difference been like between like trying to build strong friendships before being married versus after being married yeah for sure um, and I think everyone's different but for me uh, graduating college it's just so different you go from mm -hmm. being in an environment where you're pe around people all the time everyone's in the same area to right. being alone basically mm -hmm. and um, and that goes for whether you're married or not I mean I wasn't married directly out of college so mm -hmm. I had um, that time frame of just going back to living with my parents and not being around my friends all the time and it was yeah. kind of lonely and like mm -hmm. even after being married I have moments where I'm like wow I kind of miss just being around my friends all the time mm -hmm. um, because yes your spouse should be like you should be so close to your spouse and you should be able to talk to them about anything um, which you guys are yeah and yeah. you can uh, absolutely enjoy being around them you mm -hmm. should but you both need to have your separate friendships because yes. if you spend 24 seven with each other, things mm -hmm. can get a little clingy mm -hmm. and you get frustrated mm -hmm. with each other. And sometimes <laughs> you just need to mm -hmm. spend time with your girls or spend yeah. time with your guys. Yeah. And um, so I think having those friendships established in college mm -hmm. is yes. makes your life a lot easier. You That's can absolutely so make friends after you're graduated yeah. for sure. Whether you love your coworkers or mm -hmm. maybe you meet friends at church or wherever you go, but it's just easier in my opinion and in my experience to make those friends in college um, and then just keep up with them after you graduate. Um, you have to be like the word intentional, but you have to be more intentional after you graduated about keeping up with those yeah. friends. You have to text them more often and mm -hmm. FaceTime yeah. more often, just make plans to spend time with each other because if you don't, it's just really easy to let those friendships slip yeah. and just slip into, oh, I'm just with my spouse all the time. Yeah. Um, which like I said, it's not a bad thing to be with your spouse, but mm -hmm. you just, you have to, have those friendships and be really intentional about keeping up with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. Being intentional about it, but like also sometimes making things routine yeah, makes it a sure. lot easier. Like ever, like first Saturday of the month, like me and the girls get brunch together, yeah. like yeah. something mm -hmm. like that. That's probably something we should implement. But yeah. like, you know, it's just, I think that yeah. makes it easier if it's something that's always on your calendar. It's something you're going to be reminded to do yeah. all the time. Uh, it just makes, uh, I think that's that makes it easy. Yeah, that's really good yeah. practical advice. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I hate when people say, like, be oh, intentional. Like, I know, but how? No. <laughs> I'm glad you said you that. Get yeah. bored, you get, like, busy yeah. with things. Exactly. You know, like, next week, okay, next week or next month. After the right. holidays. And then, yep, yep. So, yeah. like, when you do have it on the calendar, it's like mm -hmm. you're already expecting yes. it, and mm -hmm. then you just show up, and, like, it's really good. Yeah. Right. Because, sure. like, after you graduate, your schedules are so crazy. Everyone's probably working. You've got new schedules. So, like, yeah, making a practical step to just set the time on the calendar. Really yeah. Cool. yeah. I actually live in the Dallas area, DFW area, and these three girls live in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like these are three of my really good friends, but we're literally doing like long distance friend long distance friendship. The worst. It's <laughs> horrible. It's horrible. Like I miss them so much. And so we try to do like little things to stay in communication and stuff. But a lot of you will be in the same situation that I am in. You know, you've built these strong relationships in college, but then you end up moving back home or maybe you got a job in a different state or whatever it may be. Um, so we kind of want to touch on like, how do you maintain these relationships after you've left college, after you graduated, maybe after you've been married, you know? Mm -hmm. So what I'm just going to say, say Marco Polo. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. No, it's because, the like, best. We talked about it, but like FaceTime, you kind of almost have to schedule sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And it can put a lot of pressure of like, oh, like we have to talk about this, this, and this. Yeah. <laughs> but like with Marco Polo, you just or apps that where you can send video to each mm -hmm. other you yeah. can record it anytime you can watch it anytime so that's mm -hmm. a really good yeah. way instead of texting too mm -hmm. I like yeah. that you can see yeah. the emotion you can see the face hear the tone mm -hmm. that for me is like mm -hmm. almost it's not the same as spending time definitely not but like right. it's as close as you can get mm -hmm. so yeah. that's what I really like mm -hmm. yeah in case you didn't know Marco Polo is a video communication app yes yes, yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Marco Polo is yeah. Yeah. yeah no yeah. it's really good yeah, yeah I totally agree because like sometimes like I have a couple friends that are like long distance or whatever and like mm -hmm. you have to block off like I'm like okay I haven't talked to them in a while so like we're yeah. probably gonna talk for like two or three hours. Yeah. And then like <laughs> yeah, you have to block off. Yeah, you have to block off this huge chunk of time, which is like, good, it's important. But it's yeah. just like, I don't know, it almost you're almost like dreading it. You're like, oh, I have to like take off yes. this whole like Saturday mm -hmm. morning and blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, Marco Polo has been the biggest blessing because it's like you could just talk about random stuff. Like I told him about how this dog peed outside. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or like, hey, I'm sitting in traffic, you know, you're just like, you feel way more. Yeah. 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 
No, that's so good. I have to give a shout out to my cousin Jessica if you're watching this because she's actually the one who showed me the Marco Polo app mm -hmm. and I think all of her friends use it as well. Mm -hmm. And the more I started using it, I was like, oh my gosh, my friends need to get this. And every, yeah. ever since then, I feel like we've been a lot mm -hmm. more connected. Like I can just see them in their like normal everyday. Yeah, yeah exactly. On my way to Starbucks. Like the other day, I was like, guys, Starbucks messed up my order. And it was like, yeah, yeah. It was so was funny. Like, Tell them anything. Just exactly. like in the moment. And then yeah. even me, like I, well, actually all of them have been pretty good about it. Like we're trying to make trips. Granted, Tulsa yeah. is not too far from Dallas. Mm -hmm. So it's about like four, three hours and 45 minutes. So it's doable. I know for a lot of people, if you're like really long distance, that's maybe not as easy. Mm -hmm. um, but we try to do that. Like we try to even plan weekends in advance to kind of just like mm -hmm. actually make an effort to yeah. either come up or go down and just like even spend even a few days with them. Yeah. Hopefully this video was encouraging to you guys and I am so thankful that I had my friends in this video. I wish I could have them in every video with me because I love them so much. But hopefully you found this video encouraging. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And, oh my God. and if, you have, if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. We love you guys so much. And we'll be praying for you as you're choosing your college, as you're entering college. Um, if you're in college already and this is something that you're struggling with so we will be praying for you guys and we're rooting you on and we love you guys talk soon Bye. Bye. yeah to piggyback on that i hate that saying but <laughs> <laughs>